The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here on this 19th day of September. Whoops, 18th day of September. You don't want to give too many days away here. Huh? 18th day of September, it is Wednesday. We're looking at the uh, VIX index up $1.32 at 18.93. If after 2.30, the volatility index is getting to the 19.8 or 20 area and the Dow is down uh, triple digits, S&P is down sharply, that should carry through to the close if that VIX is still holding very, very high. If the VIX is pulled back and it's now at 17.30 at about 2.45 this afternoon and the Dow is up maybe 120 and the S&P is up nicely, up maybe uh, 38 or 40 points, I think that's a good sign. And now I can talk about things. Let me just run this really quickly because there's a lot to talk about. We've got Fed speak today. Dow's down at 57 at 41,548. So I, I don't want to show all the different charts other than to say, in the Chapman Wave methodology, we try to identify the lowest low bar to go long or at least to, to get a buy signal uh, initiated. Uh, we actually did that on August the 5th. Um, and so we've been, uh, we've been long the um, UDOW three times long. We, we added to that position and we've taken it off. And mostly what we're looking at right now is that we've got a position we took a little bit off uh, today. I think it was about a 17% gain, just a tad because we want to keep that core, we want to add to it if conditions are met. So I, I'll get into the other stuff in a moment, but most importantly, look, the high that was made at 41,585 on the 20th of August had a very strong MACD, a strong stochastic flat in the 90 area, it's now at 87. The on-balance volume was climbing. <clears throat> relative, relative strength was good. Um, and now we've made this leg D, the missing leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology. You try to identify the low, you uh, see if it can get upgraded to a buy mode. The implication immediately says it should go to at least four higher peaks. At the fourth peak, peak D, A is the first, B is the second, C is the third, um, D is the fourth. Other things can happen. Well, we're right there. So re regardless of what the Fed does today, we're in a situation where for subscribers, and I did send an update uh, of what the parameters are that we'll be looking for uh, to my opening call this morning, and the update went out at about um, 9.16. Uh, so the, just to update, because I had one of the numbers was, mm, I, it was a few cents off. I should have made a few cents more. That's the, that's the little window that we're looking at if we want to get um, become cautious and at least take some money off the table or add a short position. Let's put it that way. Okay. Meantime, what we're looking at is the 9 is over the 14 in the daily chart. The MACD is uh, still good. Not as good as it was, but it's good. The stochastic said 87%. Not as good as it was, but good. The uh, on-balance volume was a tad overbought. Now it's kind of good. To, and the relative strength index is holding towards the levels that it was at before. So that's a good sign. So what would it take to get the green period moving average under the 14 period negative? You'd probably have to see a close. I'd say a close, but certainly under 40,800 is going to be an issue, but probably it'll be a thousand points lower to get that green, fabulous nine period moving average over the 14 to go negative. It's green right now. And the, the uh, weekly chart will be even more. It'll be somewhere down to the 40,000 level. So, so far, all of this is very positive, as is the monthly chart. Let's do the S&P. S&P right now has gone to a leg D is an alternate count, but I've got it as a D. We went to peak C1, C2. Now you've got a D. And as I said, when I checked it out, we went above the 56.69.67 by was it less than a dollar? 56.70.81, just over a dollar. But that doesn't matter. That stretches into a leg D. And you've got the uh, Groucho Marx eyebrows reshape pattern right here uh, with a retest. Is this going to be a new leg B, or is this actually an F right now? That's, that's to be decided on Friday. It's a weekly chart. 
monthly chart has gone right into this is one, two, three, four. This is the fourth month that it's hit the pink nine period moving average. Only once has it gone above the green line. This is the Chapman Wave uh, inside track repellent zone. Look at this. It's been in place since 666, the low of the 9th of March 2009. All right. So this is a, a what is the angle? You'd say uh, maybe. 32%, uh, something like that. This is a very nice angle to the upside. And you, this is the, this is the area that's going to be for 2024. It's a monthly chart. We've got a few months to go. How does it go above this trend line or do, can it, does it stall? That's the big issue. As far as I'm concerned, I believe that it should go above it. In the meantime, back at the ranch, what we're looking at is the QQQ. Um, the Qs are at the peak. A gray peak B, they have not gone to the all-time high. I should have typed into the weekly chart there, which is at 503.52 on the 10th of July. So this has been a very big digestive phase. This is the QQQ Investco Trustee. This is the NDX 100 trading vehicle. Ha ha. What have we got? We got the IWM. The IWM is the Russell 2000 down 24 cents at 219.17. Um, holding quite nicely. It's got this pattern that says, there's, a, there's just a chance that if everything comes right by the end of the day going into tomorrow, that the high, this just this candle high, not the 228.63 all-time high of July, uh, July the 31st, but this candle right here, the high of the 1st of August at 224.89, in the next two days that we could get there if there is a rally at the end of the day, if there's a big slide, this says, like the QQQ, it's in this digestive phase. It's held a little bit better, actually, than the QQQs. Let's do the SMHs because that's really important. Where the SMHs go, generally the market is going to go. The SMHs have not even gone close to testing the last high, which is back on the 19th, around about uh, 252, and the all-time high of 283.07 made in July, uh, July the 11th of this year. We're, we're at 233. 50 points, that's a 20, what's about 20% away from that. Uh, this is this is tough. Uh, it's going to be a, quite a challenge for them to, and I'm, I, I do believe where the semis go, you've got to keep that in mind because that's always a clue to say the market at some point will follow. So, so this is a tough one for me because we've got some action that is really positive, but I have to respect those semis. Let's go to the um, gold. A goal right now is up about six. Yep, up six at two five nine eight point four. Uh, it needs in the Chapman Wave methodology invariably, especially when you're going to all-time highs, let alone recovery highs. Invariably, you'll get to a D or higher. So I'm anticipating this little Doji candle, which was a warning that we could pull back on the uh, 16th of September at two six zero two point five. I think that'll get taken out, but it might. This is okay. So now I can go to the scenario. There's a chance, it could be today, it could be tomorrow, that there's some kind of a spike in gold. It just pops over that peak C right there, goes to 2662, um, say 2617.5 or a little higher, and it doesn't have to close there. Then if I go to the 120 minute chart of the Dow, uh, this is pushing it a little bit. Somehow or other, there's some big spike that gets very close to the peak C because we're already at D in the uh, daily. And then we pull back. Oh, that's a funny scenario. Spike and drop, pop and drop. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. 
Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the US futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, so this, so this, this is a scenario that says maybe we have a quick pop and then a drop. It could be a drop and then a pop. But we're going to watch it, watch it very close. I would love for the market. Now, I, I'm going to go to Pal in a moment. But I would love, look, the, the GDX. This is the gold miners market um, ETF uh, trading down just a little down three cents to 39.46. Gold is at an all time high. Look at this chart right here. I, I love to see the miners lead and gold kind of follows or gold is together with the miners. I don't like to see, see gold moving up like this to, in a sense, I see it more as geopolitical. As, then as economic, now I, I could be totally wrong about that, but that's just my interpretation. And look, the gold miners have just been stuck. I mean, we have a gold stock. It's done very nicely since we entered it, but not, uh, when I say very nicely, it should have done way, way better with gold the way it is. Um, so I'm just, I would love for the market to kind of ignore what happens today and just continue about its business, choppy, choppy, with a slight bias, with the Dow leading. To me, that would be fine. Let me just finish this up here, and then I'm going to get into the whole aspect that I'm looking at for, for Powell. A uh, pink C in the silver. It should go to uh, a leg D into the 31, maybe 3150s. Uh, but it is a very important period in the chart formation in the weekly chart because it's got that falling axe formation, lower lows and much lower highs. Lower highs and much lower lows. And then it makes a cup formation that tries to take out the uh, – the declining, upper declining trend line hasn't done that yet. It keeps stalling right there. Um, so we'll see what happens. This is the high-grade copper right now. High-grade copper is now down. Uh, oh, it was down a little bit. Now it's up 0 0.01 at 4.29. Question came in yesterday about TGB to Seiko Mines. <clears throat> yeah, this is acting very nicely right now. It's a very low price stock. I, I never say cheap. In this case, it's low price because cheap means you understand the fundamentals. I'm not talking about the fundamentals. I'm just talking about the price. Um, 212 down a penny. Um, it's holding well. You want to see this nine period moving cross positive. The same thing with SCCO. That is uh, Southern Copper. Um, it did a, a nice bounce and now it's kind of stalling. You want to see, I want to see copper moving 
in the next two to three weeks into the 437, 440 area. Wow, if it does that, that'll be a good economic sign. If it starts to pull back, that's a problem. If you look at Toll Brothers, this is in the home builders, up near all time highs, down a bit today, down 223 at 148.43. All these leg Ds going to PT. This just says to me, you've got to be careful here. Yeah, all the technicals are really strong in these. I mean, Toll Brothers, uh, interest rates, Fed, all time high. Wow. So my my thing right now is, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be, uh, uh, I wouldn't say appropriate, but wouldn't it be enticing for uh, empty nesters who have had houses forever and are looking and would like to downsize, um, if there's a reason to downsize, they want an opportunity, but they whatever they sell, whatever they've Whatever they've garnered in, in capital, uh, it's paper capital because it's not yet sold, but in capital gains, wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be nice if there was some kind of uh, tax incentive to sell now and then move somewhere else? But where do you go with houses? You're going to go to something smaller. If you go to a condo, you've got the monthly fee and the way the monthly fee is these days, and it never goes down, it only goes up. So um, it's tough to do, but if there's some kind of some kind of incentive, all right. So let me just finish up here because I want to look at crude oil. Uh, crude oil right now is uh, down just a little bit, down 47 cents at 69.49. There has been some deflationary aspect. If you look at um, crude oil, if you look at um, grains, grains have come tumbling. Look at this wheat in 2022 was up in the 1530s. It's trading right now. At 581. Look at soybeans. Uh, soybean uh, is having a good session today. Remember, we had a buy signal that went to a buy mode uh, in this uh, particular contract. This is the continuous contract right there. There's your starting point at about 950s. Well, it goes from 1,510 down to uh, 950, and here it is trading at 1,020. So this is all deflationary corn. In fact, I said to subscribers a little while ago, about two weeks or three weeks ago, I said, hey, I think we're going to buy corn. That is the ETF or ETN. Um, and then we didn't do it because we had other things to buy. But here it is going from uh, 2022. It was up in the 730s or higher and comes tumbling down to the 370s or 380s. And here it is, 415. There's been some deflation as it has not been passed on. And if, uh, you know, this is the administration that's pointing fingers at uh, greed, greed, greed from the uh, commercial side. I'm saying, hey, wait a minute. What about the, uh, what about the, uh, all, all the, when you go to the supermarket, what about GIS? Let me just see what that's doing here. GIS is, uh, yeah, almost at uh, recovery highs. This is General Mills trading at uh, 75.16, up 65 cents. Um, hey, way off the lows, but it should actually have been. That, well, all I'm saying is that in supermarkets, the, the prices have gone high and they haven't come down. But it's like gas. When gas goes up, it takes a long time for them to find the sign or press the button to show the lower prices when they do come down. All right. Now, with that said, I think I've done everything except the most important. Here we go. Bonds. Peak E in the Chapman Wave methodology. You've gone to a D or E. This is an E in this case. You've had a gap down. What happens next? Can the TLT go back up into the 102s to see yields come down? Or at 100.12, is it going to slide into the 98s? That's the big question. Right now, if everything, if everything was, there wasn't a Fed speak this afternoon at 2, 2 o'clock to 2.35, I would say, you know, uh, yields, uh, this is where you can have a little digestive phase, but all the technicals are strong. Uh, bonds should go higher. Yields should be coming down over a period of time. But maybe we've got a little digestive phase right now. All right, I think I covered all of that. Now what I want to do is this. So Powell, don't, th don't look at the market. Just think of it as you are the Fed chairperson. You're the chair, right? There's a... There's a political, a little, a little political thing going on. It's called an election coming up in early November. You've done a pretty darn good job 
at walking the tightrope between putting the squeeze on so that uh, the stock market goes tumbling down. Instead, it's at all-time highs. Bond yields have come down quite a bit. Here's the TBT. Look at that. Dreaded H pattern. This is now the third month where it's gone underneath the left side low. Does it do it? Continue to do that? Well, that means the ultra short limit 20 year treasury bond. Let's just go to the TNX. TNX, this is the 10 year. Uh, this is the 10 year yield coming down. There's this midpoint that I, I showed ages ago. We've been here many times before at 3.693%. Uh, and um, how the market reacts is something else. But look, we've been here before. So I don't see anything yet to change that in, in a, a direct way. So his question is, how do I keep going until I retire in January? Why on earth would I want to stay in this class? I'll be back in a minute. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Open and call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully.
Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks. I'll get back in a moment to, ben, uh, to not Benanke, to Powell. Uh, let me just finish this. I had a question in the den. Uh, let me just see. Basil, following my question last week about the UV, oh, the UVX, oh, yes, I've got UVXY seeking a daily peak D. I have a follow-up. On a 30-minute chart, I could make a case for a left side, right side price time match of the 32.18 high. Uh, 32.18. Oh. Oh, oh, there, all the way to there. All right. Um, yeah. Um, center point in the 23.66 low range. A regular strength high peak uh, on a Friday. It could have gets there by Friday. So let me just do this. I've just done this from the, the low that was made at noon on the 13th of September. We've gone peak A, peak B, double top at the uh, 20, right there, at the 2567 level. Then I've used the right side peak. I could have used, I did start off with the left side, but it only took me to one o'clock. I'm going a little further than that. And I'm saying I've got this peak C1. This technically could be peak, C. in fact, it is right now technically C1. And right here, because we made a lower high, is technically C2. And what I always do, I put above it a plus sign because it acts like a D. But everything so far is still really positive. So it's a work in progress. And what I say is this Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line right here, the green dash line rising because it's in a rising trend, says that by 2.30, to uh, two o'clock to three o'clock, there could be a higher high. And what would it do? It would match. Oh, I should have put that a little lower, right? Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. I wonder why it was so high. It should match right there. It should just sneak above that D. And if it does that, uh, above the C1, C2, if it does it, this high that was made, the candle at 10 o'clock on the, on the 12th, of September of 26.16 should be hit. In fact, if it goes that high, it's probably going to go higher. So that's the way I've got the left side, right side measurement um, as an initial, just a nice way of doing it. The other thing says that if at any point after 2 o'clock, it takes out this low that was made uh, of 24.97, this market will go higher. Okay, so I have a different scenario that I'm looking at now that I have to include. There is so much speculation, and really nobody knows whether 50.5 50, uh, 50, uh, uh, raise, that 50 cents, or 50 percent, no, what's a 50 cents, uh, would make a difference as opposed to 25. And 25 is what normally would be expected right now. 50 says, oh, you know, but we've, we've had some pretty darn good economic results right now. I mean, even the housing is still, when you look at the actual prices and the stocks, the housing is still doing well. So I think Bernanke, uh, Bernanke I keep saying, so Powell is torn between a, a bunch of his cohorts wanting a higher rate a de a, a decline. And um, the, the 25 cents. So as it stands right now, my thinking is he's going to talk up the aspect that he could always, at any point, if they decide that it's there and the, the, the weight of evidence suggests it, he can always bump that number, change it. But at this particular point, it looks like 25 cents is really what the market is expecting. Will the market be disappointed or not? I would like it just to continue as it is. That's my thing. So that's that's uh, so that's Powell. So he's got an administration. Uh, you know, can say whatever you want. There is, even though he was a Goldman Sachs guy, and he understands the stock market extremely well, I'm sure. Um, there's this part of him that says, "I better not do anything to mess things up." Uh, staying as it is, a little bit of a pullback. Okay, I don't want anything. I don't want anything that is going to be put on my shoulders. 
I've managed so far to do a really good job. I, I don't want to mess that up, okay? So that's sitting in the back of his mind, maybe in the foreground of his mind. But at this point, I have to think that it, it is there. So in that sense, it's January that I'd be worrying about because in both uh, presidential candidates, you really don't know what's coming along. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, a lot of things can change. Trump said he's going to change Powell. Well, Powell, I think, is going to announce his resignation. Or he's, he's, gonna, he's going to hop out. I don't see why you should. Why on earth would he want to stay? Uh, he can enjoy having saved the day if he gets out very soon. All right. Now, with that said, there's something else. Um, housing. So my, my biggest concern is that all those programs that are be, being put in place in different cities and different states around the country to, to have affordable housing. I mean, if you look around, certainly in the Boston area, all of the Northeast that I've been to, it's just building, building, building. I'm sure it's like that in many parts of the country. And it says to me that it isn't lack of housing because when a recession comes and housing prices drop, people stop buying. They just stop buying. It's affordable housing. Well, if you've got a if you've got um, a glut of housing, and then you still put in place all the programs for affordable housing, and you know that what the the government does, they they give a fixed amount. So the amount is for rent. Let's just say that it's uh, nine hundred and thirty five dollars. Uh, that's what we, we we will supplement. Well, what happens if the other prices go down? They stuck with paying this the, the amount that they are obligated to do. I just see a, I just see it as a huge mess coming along the way in housing, looking out maybe a year or two. So that's a big problem. All right, I don't want to go on too further. I can go with a whole bunch of other things. All I can say is that I think January is the one where I'm going to be watching really closely to see what happens next, maybe December, January, okay? Because um, we just don't know. We really don't know. Ah, enough with that. Let's just get, get to our story. So the question came in. Where was it? Where was it? I've got it written down on the other page. I did that, did that, did that. Uh, XPEV, XPEV. I think that said expand. Oh, I did it in the one-minute chart. I don't want it in the one-minute chart. ESZ24. Let's get back to that. Okay, that's a stalling at minus four in the E-mini. I think you just have to wait. After 2 to 2.35, you'll be having action. All right, so we've got XP. Oh. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chap and Tiger did this in Zawa. Uh, there it is. Um, trading down 21 cents. We'll talk about that at a PG. Dow's down uh, 85. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. 
Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, so let's just go through these quickly. XPUV, there's Xpeng, uh, Inc. Designs, develops, and manufactures smart EVs. It hit that 200 feet moving average yesterday. I think I see to take some money if, if you're in it, and it's pulling back sharply today, down 2%. I see a, a single-digit stock sharply is just 20 cents, 8.86. I think it's going to hold pretty well. I, I'd say 840 if it goes under 840, closes under 840. Now it's going to take time as well. But so far, it's acting quite nicely. Uh, comp index, this is, oh, I hope I've got all this notated because I spent so much time on that. Yes, I did. Got, uh, got a peak D in the monthly chart. Remember, D is where other things can happen. Look, this is the first pullback we've had in uh, about a year in the comp index, and it's been two months since it made the high. That was a peak E slash A in the weekly chart. Uh, there's a big difference between E and an A. A says you've got to buy every dip. E says, oh, you've got to be careful. I'm in the be careful right now mode right at this particular point. And the high that was made at double top in the 18,000, uh, I think, 600s, uh, says, yeah, it's it's digesting gains. That's the comp. This is a large Nasdaq composite index. Let's go to Apple. Apple is trading right now. Oops, I can't remember the question on Apple. I'll just give you an answer. This peak C is not a buy signal that goes to a buy mode that has to go to a D because it's under the previous, uh, in this case, all-time high of 237.23. So many stocks, so many uh, ETFs and stocks made highs in July, and only a couple have gone to all-time highs since then. This is a, it's in a big consolidation. Apple looks like the uh, comp, comp index that I just looked at. So I'm just saying Apple for now could go for another, I, I'd even say three weeks, maybe even four or five weeks in the sideways range, basically between 230. I'm going to give it a little bit of room. 232, if it goes to 234, that's really good action. But 232 ish, double top ish over there. And the bottom is 210. 210 has to hold no matter what. Let's go to, sorry, I did want to talk about that, 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 and that. I wrote down some of the things. I don't want to uh, skip. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what's really important to me look, the IAI 
This is the investors. This is the iShares Broker Dealer and Security ETF. So for folks who want to buy a specific, specific uh, brokerage company, you can do the composite by buying this IAA. Now, we've been long since 45 back in 2020, and it's done very well. Our latest entry into this area, because Schwab was not acting as well as it should. Look, that's really not very good. Um, MS, which is um, Morgan Stanley, is in the sideways trading band. Goldman Sachs acted really well, took a huge hit, and then it kind of came back to peak C1, C2, and it's in the range. So uh, I had a, someone made a statement uh, to say, who doesn't have any, uh, Robin Hood has no earnings. And, uh, and I'm just saying, you know, you buy stocks for two or three different reasons. One might be dividends. One might be because it's like, uh, say, General Electric that's really turned the corner and it's now a fundamentally strong company. Or you buy something like an NVIDIA when it was on its way up. We don't, I, we've never actually owned NVIDIA for the subscribers to the opening call. And then you start to get out when it makes a, a serious top. And that's a PD all the way daily, weekly, monthly. So this is in a big digestive phase, but it's not breaking down. So, And the other is um, you, you have speculative stocks, speculative in the sense that they are in a in, – they, they – they envelop sectors that are very important to the market. So for the players, Robin Hood players, they're in the golds. They're in the Bitcoins. Look at Bitcoin right now. I've been saying since March that this is in a big digestive phase with lower highs and much lower lows. And at some point, it'll have a big spike to the outside because I see it going to a leg D in the monthly chart. But in the meantime, so Robin Hood, at least for us, uh, uh, all I can say is that uh, we're in it at a very right here. We're just off the low that was made uh, August the 5th. We got in. We've been waiting, waiting, waiting. And now it's in this leg E. I did want to talk about the cup formation. I'm not going to do that today. Uh, I'll talk about it maybe tomorrow. But it's, it's stalling at the 200 period moving average. Does the price look and say, oh, my goodness, the fundamental, it never earns anything. It's a, t oh, blah, blah, blah. No, the price is just saying, hey. It's broken out from the cup formation that I identified way back in the uh, monthly chart. It's making stair-step moves to the upside. It's looking pretty darn good um, in terms of daily, weekly. The monthly is improving. It needs a lot more. It needs to get to the 25s before it really says, hey, now I'm on my way to tackle much higher highs. It hasn't done that yet. But, yeah, this is very nice at 22.74. So I just wanted to mention since it was brought up as, uh, oh, my goodness, it has no nothing. What it does, it has players, and the players are there, and I'm just treating it as a play on other things. All right. So uh, with that said, another question came up. Where did it go? Oh, the H here we go. HGX. This is the Philadelphia housing. So this is really interesting. So many of the stocks, I had to go back and say, you know what, I do believe that the highs that were made in um, the April, May, and in some cases, July, those were highs that I'm considering as serious highs and that we've started new weekly buys. And as far as I'm concerned, the Philadelphia Housing Index, I could be completely wrong about this. I've got this as a potential leg B in the weekly chart, so whatever the uh, G slash B, I'll, I'll put the G slash B, but my thinking here is more B, and in the uh, monthly chart, it's gone to an F, and that is not an instant restart because it was four bars, but it could have the same effect, but it is an F, and then I had a question in the den about Toll Brothers. So the Philadelphia Housing Index, so all the technicals are fabulous. To get this to really turn negative in within... What's today? Wednesday? Within a week, a week from today, if, for instance, it pulls back here, and I'll have an alternate count of E slash C. I'll just put it in. My thinking is it's, it's a C. There's nothing here to say it shouldn't be. But I have to say what if, and this is the what if, if it, it closes under 775, it's at 809 right now, about 20, uh, 30 points lower. If it closes under then I'm going to have to say, you know what? Now the housing market's being impacted and maybe yields are not coming down. Maybe for whatever reason we see the yields going up. I don't know. All I'm saying is 
So for all the, I'd love for nothing to happen today and for us to just to, 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 to keep going like we have for the last week or two or three or four or five or six. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Nations Hour. Dow's down 93. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays. For his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So the instant restart, I don't want to go through it now, other than to say GE Weekly had an instant restart um, back in early, 20, early this year, back in, I think, the January. Well, I always circle it, and it's so fascinating how often it comes into effect because right now using that the weekly chart has g in leg d at instant re uh, at the ins uh chapman wave this is right here that repellent zone right there and uh leg g slash c in the week in the monthly chart but only a leg b if i'm correct about this leg b in the uh, that's why i say i wish everything just kept going as it is right now by thursday or friday because g is holding well uh, TLT, I was qu a question about that. Look, TLT has made this leg E. It's probably a peak E. And it says there could be a bit of a digestive phase, and then we go higher, meaning yields can go lower if the monthly chart is correct in leg B with a technical start to, to improve. And 90 is at 90, 100 right now. I'd say closing under 99 would be a, a problem and say yields are going higher. So this is just a little digestive phase right now. Next question was, um, gee. Oh, the QQQ, yes, the QQQ, as in a, as a, at a peak C in the monthly, Chapman says, unless I'm totally wrong, there should be a leg D 
in 2024, at least a leg D. And that should happen in the next uh, month or two. So that's the way I stand. So, so summarize, at 235, if the Dow is up over 180 points and holding and holds that through 3 p.m., uh, the, the volatility index pulls back. That's a really good sign, especially if the S&P and the NASDAQ are also moving high. If it's the exact opposite happens, it's over 200 points down, and the VIX index is pushed up into the right now, it's at 18.89. It's pushed into the high 19s, low 20s. That's it. All right, be careful for the next uh, couple of days, because I think there has to be a, an assessment to say what the Fed has done. Is that the correct move for now? We don't know, but we'll find out soon enough. I don't make any changes right now. I love our positions, but we've got a position that could come on at 2.05 this afternoon. Have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve Rose. It should be a wonderful series of shows, as always.